Okay, roll call please. If everybody sign in. All, all five are here. Okay. Hey man, good morning. My name is Edith Rogers. Um, the, this county has a contract with the law firm of Brown, White, and Osborne to provide legal representation for those citizens who cannot afford it and those who lack the mental capacity to choose representation. Um, it seems to be true under this contract they are supposed to provide legal representation to ensure these um, citizens are protected and not abused physically or financially. Under this contract they are paid approximately $800 per client with the clause for extra um, payment um, depending on the work or the situation that occurs. Um, in, probate, in the probate division, a Judge Thomas Caraman allows this firm to negate their contractual obligations for the disabled adults and children they represent. They stand by and allow them to be taken advantage of without securing a surcharge against the conservators who steal funds from their clients. Um, if they have no funds for um, them to take. Judge Caraman feels they should not have to do all the work that it would take to secure the surcharge against the abuser. But and if these citizens um, become heir to or come in um, possession of liquidated funds or property, Judge Caraman then switches his position. He, nets, he networks with the attorneys in order for them to become the conservator or they will move conservatorship to the public guardian's office so that it becomes more simplified for them to become in control of the monies. They then um, pay themselves for doing work either retroactively or in the future to monitor that no one steals those funds. Um, Judge Caraman also um, abuses his authority when he wants to, um, in order to um, have the a conservator in place removed, whether they have to manufacture reasons to have them disqualified or um, other means in order for them to become in possession of either the liquidated funds or the properties they become heir to. Um, we are asking for someone to be appointed to um, come review the information that we have. We have proof of everything that we're saying, um, and we would like them to help us to either form a committee to give some oversight to the probate division or to, um, to um, get some assistance to correct this because you have children who are being abused and going without um, the needed care that they have. Okay. Yes, your your time is up, and I. We we have a gentleman standing up, a very attractive gentleman standing in the back over there. <laughs> Jeff Van Wagenen. <laughs> he, he's he's the guy, he's the guy. All right, Lori Delgado to be followed by Monica Mukai, to be followed by Julie Hermes. Julie is trying to give her time to Monica Mukai. However, we don't allow that we during public comments. We don't do comment. that public comments. You get three, three minutes. Good morning. My name is Julie Hermes, and I would like to pass my three minutes to Monica. You're not allowed to. Okay, thank you. I'm here in support of Monica and her nephew, Ryan Morris. And I would like the opportunity for a complete and thorough investigation by the DA's office, the Sheriff's, Depo uh, the Sheriff's Department, and the Public Guardian's Office. Um, and I'd like to read this. As a guideline to investigators and first responders, the definition of elder and dependent adult abuse provided by the Department of Justice in its policies and procedure manual dated March 2015, which defines elder and adult abuse as physical 
abuse, neglect, financial abuse, abandonment, isolation, abduction, or other treatment with resulting physical harm or physical pain or mental suffering, or the deprivation by care, custodian of goods or services that are necessary to avoid physical harm or mental suffering. We are all here in support. Um, our families have been taken from us. We've been isolated. Our families are being destroyed. They are literally being killed. And it's all unnecessary. It's all happening right here in the United States of America. We are, we are citizens. We are not criminals, yet we are being treated like criminals and all of our rights are being taken away. And that is why we are here today. Uh, we, um, we plead for your support. Uh, we plead for justice. Uh, we plead for freedom for our families. And um, um, we also thank you for, for listening to us, for giving us this opportunity um, to let us come forward. This forum is something, uh, it's a step forward for the future and for the safety of all of our citizens. Um, i just like to read a few things. The topics that are included on Ryan Morris or mental, physical, and sexual abuse of, uh, of Ryan Morris. Court failure to protect Ryan from abuse for four years. That's one year, two, it's all too long. Four years is outrageous. APS failure to protect Ryan from abuse. Public guardians failure to, pro to protect Ryan from abuse. Again, sheriff's failure to protect Ryan from abuse. Ryan's continuous isolation from his family. Here is Monica, his, his only support or his one of his only supports. She's his voice. He is the voiceless. And, um, and, uh, I just, it's just appalling and change needs to be made. Thank you. Every one of you. And I thank you so much. And if there is any remaining time. It's up. It's up? Okay. It's up. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. Thank all right. you so much. Thank you. Before you start my time, I just wanted to make a note that on the bottom of your public comments form, it says, I give my three minutes to in a blank line. I would highly recommend that you take that off because at the last time I spoke with you folks, I actually called in the day before and was told that we could pass our three minutes. That's why my mother and it my father. It is true. You can pass it on for an agendized item. Ah, thank you very much for clarifying Sorry, that. That helps significantly, uh, Supervisor Jeffries. Uh, so as advocates and activists for the prevention of elder and dependent adult abuse, Within state and national organizations, we are very concerned that County Council Ms. Stacy Kiefer is not representing Ryan's best interest or protection justly, and thus we request that she be immediately replaced for the conservatee's best interest. While the Public Guardian's Office as conservator of Ryan is a neutral party, Ms. Kiefer has been openly biased during the proceedings of this case and has represented misinformation to the court. We have spent a significant amount of time and energy to protect Ryan for the, from the many years of abuse, whereas Judge Sunshine Sykes recently ruled in May in our favor, removing the abusive husband and household, which was directly against Ms. Kiefer's position that she held since December of 2017. Ms. Kiefer and court-appointed counsel Jack Osborne told Judge Caraman in Department 8 that there was no emergency to remove Ryan with his then-conservator, Sean Spicer, even after he was found to be uncooperative by several investigators ignoring phone calls to reach Ryan and traveling cross country as a, a long distance truck driver bringing his passenger, my nephew, with him along for the ride. Likewise, Mr. Spicer refused to allow the public guardian's investigator inside the house to conduct her investigation or follow up on phone calls and determined that Mr. Spicer was not an appropriate conservator. Yet, Ms. Kiefer did nothing at the time as there was no emergency even after Ryan's caretaker, Sean Spicer's mother, admitted to the public guardian's investigator investigator that she had recently slit her wrist and attempted suicide in front of Ryan reportedly because she was so depressed about Ryan's living with them in her residence. Ryan is a highly is in a highly important sensitive transitionary time right now requiring serious recovery plan for those who have suffered from years of domestic violence and dependent adult abuse including mental suffering, undue influence, isolation from his biological family, unnecessary physical restraint and rape. 
My Ms. Kiefer's track record during the course of this case is obviously enough reason to replace her with someone who will be not, not be clouded by loyalties with court-appointed uh, uh, Osborne, uh, White and uh, Black, or excuse me, White and Osborne's office and Mr. Flory, and personalities which obviously continue to negatively alter the course of Ryan Morris's life. Please take prompt action. As a neutral, as and appoint a neutral county council attorney, as time is of the essence in his therapy and with the investigation of a dependent adult abuse against Ryan. Please be proactive in defending one of the most vulnerable constituents protected under the Elder uh, Abuse and Dependent Adult Civil Protection Act and Welfare Institutions. And thank you in advance for taking immediate action for the replacement of Ms. Kiefer with neutral county council. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. And I do appreciate the opportunity to speak with each of you individually so that we are certain that the county agencies are taking appropriate action to protect the most vulnerable people. One of the most vulnerable people. You got it. Very good. Thank you. Lori Delgado. Hello, Lori Delgado. And I'm here to support Monica McKay and her nephew, Ryan Morris. Ryan Morris is 25 years old and is developmentally disabled. He has a mental capacity of a kindergarten. Riverside County Sheriff's Department abuse policy is 30 years old. It lacks the following crucial elements. False imprisonment of elders and dependent adult is a crime. Isolation of elders and dependent adult is a crime. Mental abuse of elders and dependent adult is a crime. Physical abuse of elders and dependent adult is a crime. Sexual abuse of elders and dependent adult is a crime. Law enforcement has exclusive jurisdiction to investigate crimes against elders and dependent adults. And that goes under Penal Code 368.5 and they have not done so. The elder abuse policy within Riverside County Sheriff is non-existent. I am asking Mr. Hewitt and staff for a meeting for a call to action before, because Ryan has been removed from Spicer and he's now in a place with public guardians. Let's talk about going forward with a full investigation regarding Ryan Morris. Ryan Morris' rights has been violate, violated and the inhumane violations that Ryan has experienced is criminal. Again, we are asking Mr. Hewitt and his staff about seeking assistance in this case. I talked to many law enforcement uh, departments and I talked to many families that are going through the same thing that Monica is going through. And we need to start uh, updating the policy manuals. So everything that is not included, included, like these crucial elements that I included, are vital. And especially with Ryan, you know, we are his advocates because he can't advocate for himself. And not just Ryan, but thousands and thousands of cases nationwide. So I'm asking again, Mr. Hewitt, for us for a call to, a call to action and to meet with uh, this family. Thank you so much. All right. And if you would um, meet with my chief of staff here, and we'll get some, some set up. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other speakers? All right. Uh, Council, is there any light you can shed on that? It's not an agendized item, so. Yes, thank you, sir. Um, this matter has been, um, has been filed with the Superior Court. Uh, Judge Sykes has been assigned to it. It's an ongoing matter. She recently conducted a trial and issued certain orders. Um, the principal order was to remove Ryan Morris uh, from the home and to appoint the public guardian as the temporary conservator. Uh, that has occurred. 
The court has also specifically directed that the public guardian work with Inland Regional Center to find an appropriate placement for him. That has been done. And furthermore, the court ordered that um, that uh, Mr. Morris be given uh, therapeutic visits with family members. And there is a therapist who is uh, conducting those therapy sessions with him and his family members. And so that has been proceeding. And we recently received a report from the therapist uh, regarding how those visits are uh, proceeding. There will be another hearing in December. At this point, the court has complete control and jurisdiction over this matter. Um, any issues or concerns that um, that anyone may have, Ms. Mukai is a party to that proceeding, and she may present whatever concerns she may have regarding uh, Mr. Morris's court-appointed counsel, which is an attorney with the the law firm of Brown, White, and Osborne. There is, uh, or there continues to be a fundamental misunderstanding as to the role of the county counsel's office. And I think it just bears uh, a brief mention that the county counsel's office does not represent Ryan Morris, and it doesn't represent Ryan Morris's family. The county counsel's office represents the public guardian, and only the public guardian. And we are to advocate on behalf of the public guardian's interest in their role as a conservator. And so our job is to ensure that the public guardian complies with all laws um, and all determinations and orders issued by the court, which we have done. And uh, Ms. Keffer has handled this matter uh, with professionalism and integrity. And I have the utmost confidence that you will continue to do so. She has kept me briefed on this matter throughout its pendency and will continue to do so, given the emotions that are involved in this matter. But it is before the court, and it's everyone's job to ensure that any issues or concerns are brought to the judge's attention and to then allow the judge to make whatever determinations she believes are in the best interests of Ryan Morris as the conservative. Thank you. Thank you.